This activity was about letting you see how uh, multiplication and division when reciprocals are involved relate to one another. Basically explaining why, why you copy dot flip when you are dividing with fractions. Uh, the other thing is letting you reason about where the decimal moves when you're multiplying by base 10 values. It can be base, you know, it can be a unit of 100, 10, 1,000, whatever. The, the pattern stays the same and it's just about moving the decimal in your final calculation. So if we look at set A and B for, for A, if I have 250 and I have a tenth of a time, I'm trying to figure out if I took the whole and I divided it into 10 equal parts, how much is each part worth? If I wanted to, I can do, you know, a fraction over a fraction to get 250 over 10. And then when I cancel out those zeros, I have 25 over 1, which is 25. Okay? If I have 250 and I want to find out how many times I can subtract out 10 from it or divide it by 10, well, how many 10s do I have in 250? I have 25. So we see that if I multiply by a tenth and divide by 10, it works out to be the same thing. So this is why the copy dot flip works. When you're asked to divide by a number, if you multiply by its reciprocal, you get the exact same solution, okay? 25 times one, one hundredth, so what's a hundredth of 250? So basically 250 divided by 100 means I have 2.5. Same thing over here, I'm actually going 250 divided by 100, 2.5. So we can just keep continuing this on. Um, the other thing you might notice, if I have 48 divided by 10, I can take 10 out of 4.8 four whole times with 0.8 remaining. 48 times 1 tenth, 48 over 1, is 48 over 10, which still divides into 4.8. So when I'm dividing by a tens unit, what I'm doing is, is keeping the same number, but I just increase its decimal values. So instead of having 4 point, uh, 48, I now move my decimal over one place to find a tenth of 48's value. Same thing down here. I now have 48 divided by 100. Well, there are two zeros in 100, so to do this, I just have two decimals involved in the 48. If it's 48 out of 100, it's 48 hundredths. 48 times 1 over 100 is the same thing. 4 point, or no, sorry. 0.48. So, multiplying by a number or dividing by a number or multiplying by the reciprocal of that number creates the same solutions. Now we can use these rules of multiplication with division to be able to calculate the product without actually needing a calculator. So whenever a 0.1, so this is a, a tenth of a unit, um, whenever a 1 is involved and you're multiplying, the number that 1 is multiplying by stays the same. So the only thing we have to change is the decimal value. So if I have 720 times 0 0.10, that's saying I have a tenth of 720. So any number times 1 is that number. But then I had one decimal place in the problem so I need one decimal place in the answer. So 72.0 just turns into, sorry, I squished those together, just turns into 72. Okay? 720 times 1 one hundredth means I need to find a hundredth, one out of one hundredth of 720. So if any number times one is that same number, but there were two decimal places in the problem, so I need two decimal places in the answer, which simplifies to 7.2. I didn't need a calculator. All right, that holds true for the rest of these. 
anything times one is that number. So I can just keep copying these values, these numbers down. 54 and 9.9 or nine and 2. Okay? So then I just go and count my decimals up. Okay, there was one decimal place involved in the multiplication. So I have one in the answer, 3.6. I have one decimal place here and one decimal place here. That means I have a total of two decimal places and I need two in my answer. So 2.45. I have one decimal place here, one decimal place here. So I have two, a total of two, and I put two in my answer. So if I have one and eight tenths, a tenth of a time, I have 18 hundredths. Uh, 54 times 0 .00, 0.001, two decimal places in the problem, two in the answer. And I have a total of one decimal place, two and three decimal places there. So I have one, two, I need a third number, I need to put a zero in there so that I bump the 92 over so that I have a total of three decimal places in the answer. No calculator needed. So the last one, number five, says Aaron says, if you multiply a number by one thousandth, the decimal point of the number moves three places to the left. Do you agree with this statement? Explain your reasoning. So we know any number times a one is that same number. So I have the number. I also know whenever I'm multiplying, however many decimal places in the problem are how many are in my answer. So if I have three decimal places, that means I need to have three decimal places in my answer. So it's that number with the decimal move to the left, one, two, three places. So yeah, Erin knows what she's talking about.